we'll take our side light here, plug that into it, and choose that for our... Now I want this also to be screen, and you can see now we got both renders showing up at once, but of course I can click on one or the other and then adjust the blending for real-time lighting cues. But uh, let's leave them all full blast for now. Now we'll make a another merge node here. And I also want this one to be screen. Okay, now see we got we're firing on all three cylinders here, and it doesn't look half bad, albeit a little flat. Well, I don't know if flat's the right word, but evenly lit. Let's let's just say, and also evenly colored. But we'll get to that later. Uh, the one last thing is I will fill my sky in. So let's go over here and look at that. Now I don't want to just plug this in, otherwise if I do that we'll we'll just get a, a white spot here. So I'm going to copy this node here, and this will be the sky color we apply. And I will change this color to something skyish. That's good enough. and I want a, a bitmap of the luminance channel to tell us, tell the compositor rather, what gets colored that blue or not. So here it is. So here's a basic composite, all the elements sandwiched together. Lottie dots, very nice. So now let's mix it up a bit. Let's copy this node here. Uh, let's see. Let us change the environment color. Let's let's say that the light coming from the sky is going to be a little bit of a bluish to it. That would make sense, wouldn't it? I copy this so we got the same color blue here. This is what it looks like when I plug that in. Except uh, I want this to be applied as a colorizing effect. Where's my color? There it is. Okay. That's a little strong, of course. What is the lessen the blending here. There we go. And uh, also I'm going to select this node and reduce the intensity. There we go. It's not too bad. Now let's do some other tweaks here. Let's move this stuff around to make some more room. I'll copy this node. Okay, but I don't want everything to be blue in this shot. I'm going to change the color of this guy to uh, maybe a golden color will complement that blue nicely. And of course we need to tell this to be color again. There we go. Now we're getting some more dramatic effects here. I will lower the intensity of the colorizing of the key. 
There we go. And maybe we'll... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not showing what I'm clicking on. First I, I lowered the intensity here where the orange color was applied as a colorizing. And now I'm going to lower the intensity of that light a little bit. All right. Now let's go over here. Let's see. I'm going to move these guys around some more. Copy, paste, and in you go. Once again, color mode. There. That's actually not too bad. Um, yeah, let's keep that. I'm going to select this other guy and increase his intensity some more. No, I'm sorry, not the intensity of the colorizing. I want to increase the brightness of that other. Yeah, that's not too shabby. So, as you can see, not quite as good as radiosity, but uh, not too bad. The uh, ambient occlusion brings out all those parts that would have been completely obscured because it was not getting any direct lighting. Here it is without the ambient inclusion added to it. Uh, all this stuff in the center is pure black because there is no bounce light. This is not radiosity rendering. And so we got these big blocks of blackness in the middle. So we're going to apply the ambient inclusion to fill that in. We can even lower that some, get a little more, more dramatic. And of course, you can uh, have fun, but changing the colors around, trying some funkier effects. That's pretty disturbing, isn't it? Anyway, so there you go. This is a a nice shortcut for uh, radiosity. Still, you know, I had to render four layers, but uh, when you're doing an animation that's uh, considerably long, it's probably going to take considerably less time to render the radiosity. All right, I'll see you next time.